Hello everybody, this is Tan Tan here and have you all watched War for Cybertron Siege? I uh, just finished watching it, just gonna do a review about it. So, hand thumb forward, this review will be containing spoilers, so be aware. And if you don't care about spoilers, let's get to the analyze and review of mine about this particular series as well. So first up, a few uh, points about Wolf of Cybertron. So we all know this is a trilogy and it has been released for quite some time. And the, I mean the toys. And up to 2020, we got this, the first chapter, which is Siege. So what is about Siege? Actually about and all the characters and around them. Let's get to some point right now. So the first point I want to make about will be the animation because that is the most accurate thing to comment on an animate series like this. So I'm quite impressed with this kind of animation. The art styles and the animation are quite interesting because they chose to go in a different path previous CGI films and series. So this animation right here would be somewhat similar to the animation style of Beast Wars. I mean like the Transformers are moving quite slowly and it is not as dramatic and visualized stunning such as Transformer Prime. That is the first thing I want to say about the animation of this series right here. About the voicing here over here, it is a shame that Peter Cullen is not here with us anymore. He did not participate in Siege. I hopefully that he will return in Earthrise. And the reason for that I will tell you in the next section. So instead of Peter Cullen, we have Jack Posey, the voicing here is quite nice. The only big difference I noticed around the voicing of the characters on Siege was the difference of Optimus Prime. And I think the reason for that would be this series right here describes a younger Prime, like less mature, and he's still in the, his learning phase, which is quite interesting. And I love to see more of this Prime than the upcoming mature leader type, Peter Cullen type Optimus. And the other characters are fine, I do not have any other impression to them at all. So to me, Teach, the only positive thing to say about Teach is his Optimus voicing. And next up, we have the size comparison. So this is kind of a nice one because as we all know, the Hasbro and Takara are going down the path of making the toys be in scale with the cartoon model of them. So this is um, quite interesting and all the scaling it looks really nice together. And I just love how that Transformer have different sides here and there. And the biggest impression of mine was Astro Train. Because as we all know, Astro Train is a leader class figure. So he's on the same side with some previous leader of the Siege line. But here he's actually a huge bot. And I think that is a really nice way of saying that this guy can carry the Decepticon around. And it is also a slap to G1 because we all know how stupidly G1 scaling system were. The storyline of Siege is really simple and straightforward. It tells the story of the final days of Cybertron before they left to Earth, which is in some aspect that we haven't seen them, but not a lot. So it is quite similar to what if a War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron game, where is that a young Optimus have to make the decision of leaving Cybertron before the Decepticons takes over. But at least we have another plot twist which is really dark and this is spoiler alert from right here. So they are on the wars and apparently Shockwave finds a way of uh, brain control other bots and decides to become Decepticons and by that they will win the war. So in order to do that they have to find the Allspark with the Autobot found it and then leave the planet with the Allspark but then at the consequences will destroy the planet by removing the force of life out of it. This is a brand new aspect because of all the other storylines we have learned and got the impression of the war is that actually destroying Cybertron. But here we have Optimus making the decision of protecting his people and chose to sacrifice his planet by removing the all spark out of Cybertron, which is really dark. So we also got to see some back lines of Cybertron, such as there was the noble and the lower class. And so the, apparently the Decepticon is the revolution to conquer the planet. So the powers should be more balanced between the factions instead of having them, the Decepticons, a fixed destiny. Because apparently what happens on Cybertron is that they are destined to become miners, gladiators or the higher class robots so that they cannot change at all. For example, we have Impactor which is a really interesting character because 
He said that he was born to be a miner, mining Cybertron until his death, so that the others like Mirage could racing all day. So that is a pretty nice approach. It shows us more of Cybertron history instead of just a warp, and it is a straightforward storyline. So up on this. I really appreciate the efforts and everything that they have put onto this storyline right here because it shows us more of what actually happened instead of just two faction and pew pew bang bang just like with the micro bay that is really nice and finally we have the characters and this is might be my favorite part of this video because I'm gonna analyze you a lot more of the characters and this is what I really enjoyed about the show so first of all we have optimus prime of course so like i have mentioned quite a few times in this video optimus is always developed as a noble and mature leaders instead of animation so at siege he is described to be a hot temper has doubt in himself and others doubting him capable of leadership and that is quite a shame because optimus really will become the destined noble leader but here have him lacking his characteristic but i really enjoyed this build because it gives us a better and more flexible looks on optimus like who is he and the kind of leader he is and i actually i enjoy this a lot because it's a new thing and it is great to see something new out of a very familiar character next up of course we have the old mech himself the megatron so what is with this megatron so this Megatron is the normal revolutionary general we've always seen thinking that what he is doing will be the best for his people and the fate of the planet. So at the first half of the series he is built as a very calm and honored leader. But upon the, the last half he will, he is slowly transforming himself into the kind of dark and ruthless leader that we have always known him to be because he cannot wait to finish the war with the Autobot so that there will be no resistance because most of the Decepticon has taken over the planet already about Ultra Magnus well this Ultra Magnus provides us a really nice and uh, one new thing of this show which is the Alpha Trion protocol so apparently instead of the matrix of leadership we also have one more thing it's called the Alpha Trion protocol and what it is is actually the map and all the other classified information which is kind of showing the sign of the old spot about ultra magnus we can see that at first we went to meet with megatron because they were friends brothers and then he was about to agree with the whole truth but then after hearing megatron's ideas about terminating the autobots he refused to agree with the treat and then as a result he got captured. So a lot of people think that Ultra Magnus betrayed the Autobot cause, but at this point I have to disagree because what he actually does is for the best of the Cybertronian race. He doesn't want any more bloodshed. That's why he did what he did. What is nice to me is Bumblebee. Because at this show, Bumblebee doesn't have a side at first. He is just a scavenger doing what it takes to live and doesn't want to get involved into the war. And that is really nice of him because it shows that there are other parties which doesn't care about what happens. They just want to live their life. They don't care about any big ideas or anything. So, but then when Ultra Magnet died, he got the Alpha Tron protocol and then he was like, I was chosen, I was destined to do something better for my life and then he joined the Autobots. To me this character development is quite dull because this doesn't, doesn't so, show anything special. It's just a typical hero line. And then of course we have Jetfire which is my favorite character. So he was a revolutionary commander. He commands the Seekers before Starscream. So he at first he agrees with Megatron but then things got darker and he thinks that he cannot size with them anymore because this is not honorable to do the things that the Decepticon were doing. This is similar to Dreadwing of Transformer Prime. He was a very dedicated Decepticon but then when he found out that his honor is damaged he said nah fuck it I cannot do this anymore and he just simply gave up the cause of the Decepticon. 
which is really nice of him. I enjoy this character to see that the thinking and the minds of him got changed. It's really interesting. Next up, we have Impactors. He was a miner and then he followed the Decepticon. Then at the edge of dying, he realized that the things that matter is their life. And so he just get up all the Decepticon course and helps the Autobot. Or should I be more specific, helping Ratchet to fix the space bridge so that they can leave the planet. And next we have Ratchet. Ratchet is also a really interesting change in character because it of all the other indications, Ratchet has always been shown as Optimus, best friend, bro, long friend, old friend, and everything like that. But here we have a Ratchet doubting Optimus and said that this war is stupid. He doesn't sign up for all of this and he doesn't care about the war. And I think this is a really nice because it shows that not everybody agrees with especially when it involves a war destroying their planet not everybody agrees and finally we have Elita 1 so she's the second in command of the Autobots after Ultra Magnus and she's a kind of female bot who actually has feelings toward Prime and she builds up for it but then she makes the sacrifice choice of remaining in Cybertron with the Autobots leaves the planet to protect it and that is my summaries of the characters and the predict for Earthrise well this is really interesting because we actually see the arc leaving the planet and then at the end we see that the arc is kind of shut down and we have some uh, unknown vessel approaching so I will predict it in two lines the first it is that the nemesis is actually approaching the arc this is close to G1 because we all know that Earthrise will practically be G1. Secondary, it will be the Beast War ships because Kingdom is Beast War. But that is only my two predictions. But the mainly focus for me will be what happened up on Cybertron. Because we got Elite 1, Red Alert, Jetfire. They stay on Cybertron to protect the planet. From who? Of course from the Decepticons. Because we haven't seen them leaving yet. So are they going to return? or are they not so i think this is really interesting because of this packed in six episodes of really nice animation so that would be my review for today what do you guys think of this trilogy comment in the comment section below and discuss with me because i really enjoy this series and i really hope to see earthrise really soon until now and enjoy see